Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mega Projects. This one is all about the Arecibo Telescope because it recently collapsed and everyone in the comments was like, Simon, when are you doing the Arecibo Telescope? Why haven't you done it already? And uh, to me, I was like, isn't that the thing in the Golden in, in GoldenEye with James Bond? And he's like, for England, James? No, for me. And it's glorious GoldenEye is the best James Bond movie, it is not debatable. But this video is brought to you by Magellan TV. Discover a new type of documentary film experience with Magellan TV and its binge-worthy documentaries. Updated every week. More on them in just a bit. Shortly before 8am on the 1st of December 2020, in the thick of Puerto Rican forest, 95 kilometers west of the capital of San Juan, a booming crash broke the silence. 006's body hit it. <laughs> this particular area of the world looks very different depending on where you are. Standing within the thick vegetation, it could be easy to feel like you are miles, perhaps even hundreds of miles from civilization. However, from the air, you would see that the vast ocean of green below is broken by an odd sight. A giant telescope lies nestled in the undergrowth, its colossal dish hugging the floor, while its receivers hang above, pointing expectantly towards the star. This is one of the largest single aperture telescopes anywhere on the planet. Or should I say, it was, because that booming crash in early December signaled the end of the Arecibo telescope. Built in a natural sinkhole, the Arecibo Telescope was a breathtaking sight. The inverted spherical dome that lines the sinkhole floor measures a huge 305 meters, that's a thousand feet in diameter. That's almost three times the length of a Premier League football pitch. Suspended 150 meters above the dish and held in place by three giant towers on the edge of the dome was the receiver and radar transmitters. For 57 years, this was one of the most important observatories on the planet, but time it finally caught up with this aging hulk after being battered by hurricane maria in 2017 and suffering damage as a result of earthquakes in 2019 and 2020 the end appeared to be near as the final months of 2020 passed by but near turned out to be much closer than anybody had anticipated While the Arecibo Telescope has been used for a wide variety of scientific functions over the years, when it was first envisioned in the 1950s, it wasn't necessarily science and exploration that those involved had in mind. I'm betting it has something to do with the Cold War. With the USA and the USSR, Cold War. Beginning to both posture and with the nuclear arms race hotting up, the threat of apocalyptic weapons raining down from the sky became a serious concern. This was still early days and the United States was almost a decade away from the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, which was founded in 1958 and would eventually provide one of the most complex and comprehensive early warning systems on Earth. But in the early 1950s, those working on early warning systems focused on the unique physical signatures that a nuclear weapon would make if it was fired up into the atmosphere and then re-entered, ready to attack a specific target. The focus was the ionization of the atmosphere, which could be caused by hot, high-speed objects. Specifically, within the ionosphere, the ionized portion of the upper atmosphere, located at altitudes between 48 kilometers and 965 kilometers. Kilometers, that is some range. Unfortunately, very little was known about the ionosphere or indeed how these physical signatures might manifest themselves. One of the objectives of the planned Arecibo telescope was to study this. Two physicists working for Cornell University, William E. Gordon and George Peter, were given the task of developing plans for the telescope, and their interest was drawn to the karst region in western Puerto Rico. Karst areas typically come with plenty of caves and sinkholes, which could provide the perfect location for a gigantic dome. One enormous cavity, located 18 kilometers south of the town of Arecibo, it stood out. However, the original designs didn't quite fit with what appeared. Initially, the Arecibo telescope would have come with a fixed parabolic reflector along with a 150-meter tower. But having a fixed reflector would have severely hampered scientific work as it wouldn't have been able to move. Obviously, it is fixed. Further, the tower located in the center of the dome would have severely affected signals. Instead, they needed something that could move above the dome without blocking too much of it. The answer came from George and Helias Dondalakis, who devised a structure 
structure that called for a donut-shaped truss, which is a series of beams assembled to create a rigid structure to hang above the dome, suspended by four towers located at its edge. The truss could be rotated 360 degrees and could be lowered in the event of a hurricane. Just a quick word on George Dondalakis before we move on, because, well, he's one of those little-known yet truly extraordinary people that we should probably know more about. His story begins in Detroit, where he was born to a Greek family which moved back to Crete when he was just four years old. During World War II, he fought for the Greek resistance and was eventually recruited by Britain's special operations executive and played a leading role in the successful kidnapping of Nazi Major General Heinrich Kreip before being forced to flee Crete. While undergoing training in Cairo, he switched his services to the American Offices of Strategic Services OSE, and was sent back to Crete, where he eventually commanded a force of 7,000 guerrilla fighters. Despite ferocious Nazi attempts to destroy the rebels, their sabotage of railway lines and maritime shipping proved to be hugely damaging the German supply lines. After the war, he was awarded the American Legion of Merit, as well as the British King's Medal for his services during the conflict. He went on to become a brilliant physicist responsible for no fewer than 26 US patents in the fields of radar, electronics, and narrowband television. But he is best remembered for his design of the Arecibo telescope. He was overall just a truly remarkable human being. And if you want to watch some truly remarkable documentaries, you see what I did there? Consider a subscription to today's video sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a new documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers who love history. That's a good thing. They believe in the old adage about studying history. You can't know where you're going until you understand where you've been. As a result, Magellan TV has one of the richest catalogues of history content available pretty much anywhere today. Everything from the Greeks to the Great War, plus modern history biographies, scientific profiles, true crime, and so much more. Their team of producers and content developers look all over the world for new documentaries to add to their library, updating it every single week. The end product is like if Netflix was designed by your favorite history professor. And what's one thing that you love about paid streaming services? There are no ads. You won't find any ads on Magellan TV because there's nothing worse than when your content is interrupted by ads, right? So if you're looking for 4K explorations and binge-worthy topics, you should consider Magellan TV. Today, I'd recommend The Age of Hubble. It's a particularly interesting documentary that you could dive into if this exploration of the Arecibo telescope has you all fired up or some such. So if you're looking for some different streaming options for yourself or a friend or family member, give Magellan TV a look. Just click the link in the description below to get started with Magellan. They will hook you up. And let's get back to the video. Construction of this vast telescope began in the mid-1960s. The dome itself was initially built with a half-inch galvanized wire mesh, but this was changed in 1972 when the mesh was replaced with 38,778 perforated aluminium panels, each measuring 1 by 2 meters. This boosted the maximum operating frequency from 500 megahertz to 5,000. The receiver, weighing a hefty 820 tons, was suspended above the dome by 18 cables attached from the three towers. The initial design had called for four towers, but three were eventually deemed adequate. These were reinforced concrete towers, one measuring 111 meters in height, while the other two stood at 81 meters high. This was because of the natural height difference in the area, but it meant that all three towers had the same overall height. The platform in the center came with a 93 meter long bow-shaped track known as the azimuth arm, and it was here that the antennas and secondary reflectors were located. In 1997, a Gregorian reflector system was was installed at the Arecibo telescope. This style of telescope was first developed way back in the 17th century and includes two concave mirrors positioned opposite each other. The primary and larger mirror is responsible for collecting the light and bringing it into focus before reflecting it back across to the secondary mirror, where again it's bounced back to the primary and passes through a small hole and onto the eyepiece located behind. On the Arecibo, these mirrors were located in the receiver hanging above the dish, with one mirror measuring 21 meters in diameter and the other 7.9 meters. The entire structure is housed in a 90-ton enclosure, which is the equivalent to six stories in height. As well as the new reflector system, the update added more advanced receivers, now capable of covering 1 to 10 gigahertz, which greatly improved 
the telescope's accuracy. When talking about Hertz in relation to astronomical instruments, it's perhaps easier to think in terms of distances. The receivers are attempting to detect radio frequency radiation between wavelengths coming from outer space. These lengths typically range between 10 meters, 30 megahertz, and 1 millimeter, 300 gigahertz. So the higher the gigahertz range, the more accurate the telescope is gonna be. The Arecibo telescope could operate between 50 and 10,000 megahertz, or 10 gigahertz, meaning the wavelengths were between 6 meters and 3 centimeters long. It could pick up signals as close as 6 kilometers above the Earth and as far away as, well, several billion light years. And it was extraordinarily sensitive, said to be able to pick up mobile phone conversations as far away as Venus. Not that there are any mobile phones on Venus, but if there were, Arecibo would have eavesdropped. Lastly, this upgrade saw the power of the Arecibo's transceivers significantly boosted, going from 420,000 watts to 1 million watts. Among other things, this resulted in a much better resolution and could study Venus with a resolution of 1 kilometer, while asteroids and comets were even better at 15 meters. Amazingly, that's good enough to detect a ball the size of a golf ball made of steel on the moon. Throughout its 57-year lifespan, work at the Arecibo telescope led to countless discoveries. The most significant early finding came just a year after it opened, with the discovery that Mercury's rotation period was not 88 days, as had long been thought, but rather 59 days. In 1968, the team at the telescope discovered the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star 7,175 light years from Earth. Today, we still only know of around 2,000 of these pulsar stars, which have an optical pulsar rotating around them. The term often used is a lighthouse star because of its rotational pattern. The Arecibo telescope was able to accurately measure the size, 20 kilometers in diameter, and the rotational speed, 33 milliseconds, meaning that its beams of light circle 30 times every second. Another pulsar was discovered in 1974, this time the first known binary pulsar star. A binary system involves two stars orbiting a common center of mass, which was named PSR B1913 plus 16. Catchy, a find that eventually led to Russell Hulse and Joseph Taylor winning the Nobel Prize for Physics. Two further pulsars were discovered, which pushed the boundary of our understanding even further. The first millisecond pulsar, PSR B1937 plus 21, was discovered in 1982, spinning 642 times per second, which was a record until 2005 when PSR J1748244 AD appeared. It was tearing around at 716 times per second. In 1980, the Arecibo successfully detected Comet Ankun, which was a first by radar observation. In 1989, the observatory recorded an image of an asteroid for the first time in history. Just in case you're interested, 4769 Castalia is a peanut-shaped asteroid approximately 1.4 kilometers in diameter, and it falls under the category of potentially hazardous asteroids. But don't worry, though it did pass within about 4 million kilometers of the Earth, that's 11 distances from us to the Moon. We've also got a pretty good idea of its orbit for the next 200 years, so it looks like we're going to be safe from that particular one at least. In 1990, the Arecibo caught a glimpse of the first known extrasolar planet, planets outside our solar system, while in 1994 it was used to map the distribution of ice in the polar regions of Mercury. In 2010 and 2011, the observatory detected strong bursts of radio emissions from the T65 Brown Dwarf 2 mass J10475385 plus 21242234 names are terrible. <laughs> Before you get too excited, though, this simply means that the star has an incredibly strong magnetic field and magnetic activity similar to that of our own sun. From substantiated science to a real hit and hope. Uh, Hail Mary, if you will. Since the 1970s, data from the Arecibo telescope has been used in the ongoing search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI. Much of this has been done through passive scanning of the skies, but on the 16th of November 1974, things were not quite as passive. It has come to be known as the Arecibo message, an interstellar radio message that was beamed out from the Arecibo telescope in the direction of the globular star cluster M13, around 25,000 light years from Earth. This wasn't so much a message, but rather a compilation of information designed to showcase humanity. It included the numbers 1 to 10, the atomic numbers of the elements hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, which make up deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. The formulas for the chemical compounds that make up the nucleotide 
nucleotides of DNA, the estimated number of DNA nucleotides in the human genome, along with an image of the double helix structure of DNA, the physical height of an average man, a figure of a human, and the human population of Earth. A graphic of the solar system was also included, which showed roughly where the signal came from, as well as an image of the radio telescope. The message included 1,679 binary digits, approximately 210 bytes, and it was transmitted at a frequency of 2,380 megahertz. Needless to say, there has not been a response. The Arecibo's downfall began long before its demise came in December of 2020. Financial cuts began eating into it, and its budget of $10.5 million in 2007 fell to just $4 million in 2011. Funding was cobbled together from a variety of sources, including the Puerto Rican government, NASA, private funding, and even assistance from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. But even so, the writing was on the wall. In 2007, Hurricane Maria tore off parts of the receiver, which damaged the dish below. While the scale of the damage was small, it proved to be another nail in the storied telescope's coffin. In August 2020, a support cable snapped, leaving a 30-meter gash in the dish, and in November, one of the support towers collapsed, inflicting even more damage to the telescope. An announcement was made that was not a great deal that could be done, except ensuring the safety of those on site. Plans for the safety commissioning of the observatory were still being developed, when on the 1st of December 2020, a second tower collapsed, this time bringing down the massive receiver in the center, causing a huge amount of damage. It's not difficult to feel like this is a rather sad ending for such a wondrous device that has taught us and showed us so much. Yes, there are certainly other telescopes around the world that have caught up and indeed now work better than Arecibo, but its contribution to our knowledge of space has been enormous. From the groundbreaking exploration of the pulsar stars to the wonderfully ambitious Arecibo message, this gigantic observatory located in the Puerto Rican forest has certainly played its part in space exploration. It's not immediately clear what happens now to the Arecibo observatory, but its days of searching the universe are presumably over. But I do like to think that one day extraterrestrial life might reply to the Arecibo message or even visit the spot that it was sent from. And maybe they'll stare down at the vast forest below and wonder, well, where did that message come from? So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.